This is a Packard Bell. It says Packmate. I don't know what Packmate means, but that's what it says. Um, this is the front, obviously. We've got a power. It's like a keyboard input here. Three and a half inch drive and a five and a quarter. Do you have to have a disc in there before it closes? I don't know. Nothing. It's a empty reset and the key that I never have the keys. I never have the keys. All right, let's uh, let's look at for damages here. Looks like it's got a little ding right here and some abrasions. It's, um, this arm is just a joke here on this thing. Let me see if I can. Yeah, see, it's got a ding there. It looks like scratches in the paint. It needs to be refinished. The front, the yellow on the front obviously needs some retro bright. And, um, and then refinish this. Okay, we'll flip it around. Look at the back. Don't want to knock things off the table here. Bring this in. We'll look what we got here. Packard Bell, Chatworth, California. Chatworth is like the same place with that uh, Tandon I just did. It's from as well. Model number PB800. Got the serial number there, of course. And then over here we have a VGA with some jumpers. A combination serial parallel and... Oh, it's got the male connector here. I don't know what that was. What is this one? It's not an external SCSI or something. What is that? It's like the, the wrong gender for... Um, what I'm thinking of here, okay. It's got some rust, these screws are rusty. So I'm gonna have to uh, do something about those. Got a little bit of rust around the power supply. I'm definitely gonna double check on that power supply, make sure there's no problems with it. But um, same warning as always, guys, I'm gonna be really up close to the microphone with this electric screwdriver, cord the screwdriver. Oh, it's also got some damage down here. Looks like that's bent in a little bit. And the only way to bend it out would be like a pair of pliers, which would um, mar up the outside as well. So yeah, I think I'm gonna end up trying to match this color and then repaint it. Interesting, okay. So there it is. So let's go ahead and um, start taking this apart here. I'll just do a more of a wide angle view here. Long screws again, just like on the other one. Huh, that one has like a little plastic washer on it. Yeah. All right, here we go. I assume again, yep, it goes out the front. Again, I have to turn it sideways because I want to run into a different table I have. Oh, almost dropped it, Jesus Christ, okay. All right, what do we have in here now? Okay, let's zoom in here and take a good look. Um, we have some empty slots here, U29 and U37. All of these banks are empty. If those were supposed to be some sort of memory, and over here, these are empty as well. U51. Got a speaker connection. Reset switch. Um, I can't see what that one is. Oh, it's the, the lock. 
Okay. And the keyboard lock is over there. All right, what kind of cards do we have? This looks like that serial card, the combo serial card. Let's go ahead and pull that one out. Phoenix 286, so it's a 286, okay? I kind of had a feeling it was a 286. Go ahead and grab all of these. Yeah, I had a feeling it was a 286, so. I think I looked it up and that's what it said it was anyway. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna remove this card here. Oh, this is one I probably gonna have to find a battery. I bet there's a battery on here. Let's, let's go with the look here. Okay, what we have here is a serial card. Looks really new. Dang, this is really clean. There's not a speck of dust on this thing. Wow. Like literally out of the package looking brand new. Beautiful card. Okay. That's good to know. Okay. Oops, I didn't I didn't pull out the correct one. So let's put the Put the wrong one back. Okay. Video card again, really clean. Paradise VGA. I actually bought a Trident card, which is uh, being shipped. I shouldn't have. I should have just kept um, kept my money. I bought one for my um, my fifty one seventy. All right, all right. Very very simple VGA card. No no frills. And then lastly, we have the interface card. Dang, these cards are all so freaking new looking. Oh, I see a battery. All right, let's see if there's any leakage. I have to test the voltage on the battery too. Um, there's a hard drive LED right there. 1987. Okay, so we gotta get this out of the way so I can see the battery. The battery's there. All right, I might, I might take the motherboard out on this one. Because I want to be able to gain access to the battery and the plugs back there. So let's go ahead and take this card out completely. Okay. So this was part of the serial parallel port card. Some kind of a printer port or something, whatever. Okay, so I'm gonna, okay, I'm recording this. Let me just get in this really close here so they can remember where all these wires go and the orientation of the colors. It's got yellow, orange, gray, blue, red, yellow. Okay, all right, so there we go. And there's a spot for math coprocessor, I'm assuming, or something. Yep, I think so. Yep, 287, yeah, that's, and I have one. I have a math coprocessor, so I could put one in. I bought I bought one uh, on eBay, and it came, I, it, was a, it was a lot of two. All right. So I put one in my 5170, and I have the other one laying around somewhere. And the other computer I'm going to take apart, my other, my other Packard Bell is a 486, so it doesn't need it. So now I know what, you know, how lucky was I to get up with two of them and need, need two of them. Okay. Very, very cool.
get into 16-bit slots, of course. We have 8-bit and 8-bit slots and some 16s. Because it's a 286, so there we go. You know, that's the reason. No sound card in this one, right? Yeah, there's no sound card in here. Okay, well, I have a sound card I can put in it. That's surprising. It's got a VGA card, but no sound card. So I guess this thing doesn't have any proprietary stuff in it, right? No. Huh. Well, that's interesting. All right, here's the motherboard coming out. Looks like this, oh, there's a plug back here. Okay, so the plug has white towards me. Okay. That seems to be the one that's causing the problem there. There we go. Not sure what it's to. And then we have, we have this uh, PS1, PS2, and they're labeled, so good. So I don't have to worry about getting them wrong. I think I remember right. Yeah, you got to kind of, they kind of go in at, a, at an angle because the, hmm. Remember there's a trick to this. Can't remember the trick though. There we go. There we go. Okay. Yeah, this thing is, this thing is so clean. I can't believe it. Wonder why, wonder why. Okay, and the, and the battery, like I said, doesn't seem to have any corrosion at all. It is a, uh, let's see here, a 3.6 volt. So let's start with testing the voltage of the battery. Where's my, all right, set for a five volt battery and I see a little rust at the connection though. Oh yeah, look at that battery's dead as a doornail. That means the, the BIOS is probably completely cleared. So I'm gonna have to figure out what kind of hard drive that is and everything type, you know what I mean? Yeah, look at that, 0 0.2, 0 0.19. Ah, that sucks. All right, well, so I'm gonna be desoldering the battery and then, um, I'll have to buy some sort of a, a battery holder or something, or maybe just solder some wires onto it. Dang. Well, I mean, it was to be ex expected. I mean, we expected that, right? So Phoenix 286, it says there. Phoenix 286, 3.0, 3.10, 12. Yeah, same deal. Okay. Um, there's some, there's some memory here. It looks like, let me get my magnifying. Yeah, 25608. So it's 80 nanosecond. And then these are all empty. So I guess you can add more, which I might do. Here's for the math coprocessor. Here's the CPU. This is 286. No leakage though. On the battery, I mean, it's got what looks like it might be corrosion, but I don't know because it's got this weird, like it's got the copper color and that's what i'm seeing see like right there so it may not actually be any kind of rust or corrosion but like i do need to replace that battery i got to make it uh, 3.6 volt so 3.6 volt is a a battery holder that holds three AA batteries AA batteries are typically 1.5 volts so two of them would be three three of them be 4.6 or 4.5 a little bit high but 
What else can you do? I don't know. I have a 3.6 volt battery, I think, for an Apple, but it's got a different, it's, it's a longer battery and it won't fit in there. I, I mean, I could probably extend it over to this area, but I don't want to. So what I'll probably do is, like I said, I'll probably just put some leads on there with some kind of a connector, and then I'll put a battery pack to the side. Okay, well, with a, with a bad battery, I don't expect to have any BIOS things, but there's no leakage. So with no leakage, I don't know what my next step should be other than to just leave it for, for right now. Because I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to run this thing a lot, but I just wanted to be able to at least um, see if it boots. So let's go ahead and pull this side of the motherboard back in. Okay. Oh, you know what I want to do is I want to pull it slightly out so I can get these connect. Oh, I wanted to test the connectors for the power supply. That's what I wanted to do. Okay, so I have to do that later, so I can leave this out for right now. Okay, I'll put this to the side. Okay, so let's uh, let's get into what drives it has. It looks like it's got um, a hard. I'm gonna pull the hard drive out. And I'm gonna take a look at the hard drive because I mean, uh, to be to be quite frank, I don't really give a crap about the floppies. Like, that's that's not exciting to me at all. It was exciting on the tandem because it was something different. But look, it has it has these like pinch in and pull releases which are probably really brittle okay so i'm in the other side here where you guys can't see me i'm sorry looks like it's got ground straps on there okay oh i think it's yeah it's coming yeah so let me pull that off let me pull i might have to take the floppies out just because you know, I'm going to have to. So you guys get to see it anyway. And it's got ground straps. All right, so there's... Oh, bugs in it coming in and get me. All right, so you push in and you just slide these out. I like that. That's really, that's really neat. But look how clean this is inside. You guys notice that? That's what I mean. The entire inside of the computer is just perfect. Is that dust? It's not even dust. See, it's just that's just the discoloration of the aluminum. It's spectacularly clean. Oh, I got some dust here. Okay, okay. I'm not living in the twilight zone. There is some dust. Okay, so this this one was upside, you know, red to this side. It has to be, and then and then the the ground strap. Okay, pull this slide this out. This one has some dust. See that? That's dust. Okay, I'll have to clean that off. And now I can actually get to the hard drive. This is why I had to pull it out is because of this. There we go. Grounding strap. I can't get the grounding strap to come off. There we go. And then the drive controller cable. Okay, what do we have here? Mini scribe. Oh, I hate those. So when it says head one, head zero, head two, does that mean like it's a oh, three? Zero, one, two? Or, yeah. Model FS, FF, I'm sorry, FXX. The underside of this is super clean. I don't see any leaky capacitors, nothing bulging, nothing looking ugly. That doesn't mean anything, but, oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Wait just a gosh darn second. I do see a problem. And you get under the microscope or micro this thing. Yeah, that looks really nasty, okay? That is a problem. 
I do not expect this drive was gonna work. The good news is, well, no, I don't really have any good news. Yeah, this has a uh, quite a bit, well, yeah, this, yeah. Okay, well, that's, uh, that's unhappy news, but not unexpected. Let me, let me show you. You guys are sitting there. What, dude, what? Just show us. Why? What are you talking about? Let me show you. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to zoom in. Does that look normal to you? I got a moth. It's a moth. It's, it's following the light here. Because I'm out in the garage, so it's exposed to the elements here. All right. You know what I mean, guys? So, what is this? Is that leaky capacitor goop? See that? Yep, bad capacitors. So this drive, um, in theory, I would need to replace all of this and it just isn't worth it. So, yeah. So yeah, we had one leaky capacitor that got all over everything. I'm glad I, I found this before I got further into it. Look at that, on top of that chip. Where's it at? Right here. Look at that. So it got all over everything. Uh, can it be repaired? Yes, of course it can. Good, but it just got over everything, though. I think both of these caps leaked. And do I have these caps? Probably. Can I can I pop the caps off? Clean all this with like alcohol and stuff, and really scrub it. Throw it through the dishwasher or something. Just the board, obviously, not the whole hard drive. Um, clean all this up and reflow the solder points and would it work 50 50 not even that man 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 darn it okay well i have to find some kind of a modern solution then because yeah there's nothing i can do with those bad caps that sucks I'm going to sit here and complain about it, but there it is. I can't even fire it up, guys. So this one until, well, I guess I could test the power supply and see if it smokes. We can at least do that. All right, let me um, get a cable. And if it pops, then, then I'll need a power supply and I'll need, if there's a cable. Okay, we'll spin this a little bit. All right. Let's see if the... Okay, so you have to have the motherboard on there for it to do its thing up here, apparently. I have to hold the button down. As soon as you release the button, it goes out. Okay. I don't want to put, connect the motherboard until I test the voltages and I just don't seem to be able to test the voltages. I could just jumper the switch. Hmm. 
Yeah. I could just jump with a switch, but let's not do it tonight. All right, I'm gonna have to make this a, a part two, part three, part four, as I go into some research and find out um, about the hard drive. And I wanna, yeah, and then I'll just make a jumper for this and then I'll test the voltages. Cause they're really difficult. I gotta use like a jumper wire in there because you see there's no, there's no easy way to get the, um, the probes in there. So I'll have to use like a paper clip or something and, and test. I should, I should um, get the reverse of these and then make a, have like a voltage regulator, not voltage regulator, voltage uh, meter. And you just plug these in and flip it on and it tells you like, okay, this, you have this, 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 and this working. But that's, uh, if I go up a, a few steps in my capabilities here. All right, yeah, I apologize for making this a short video. Lots of dust inside the power supply. I, I will remove the power supply. I will jump the switch so that it turns on. I will test the power supply directly to see if it, um, if it does anything. And I don't think just putting a, a random hard drive on there, I think I have this random hard drive. It's a little Max Tor. I don't think just plugging some random thing in there is going to make the switch work. Nope, gotta have motherboard plugged in. Okay. Okay. <sighs> Disappointing. But I do have another Packard Bell I can set up and, and do for a third video, which I will probably do right after this, if not tomorrow morning, we'll see.